Okay, today's tutorial is on creating a Lomo effect in Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is select our background layer and copy it, so Control J. Then we're going to create a vignette, so come over here, select the elliptical marquee tool, and select the area. From that, we're going to select the inverse, and we're going to feather it. So modify, feather. I'm going to go with about 100 pixels on my feather. Next, we're going to create a levels adjustment layer. So click on levels. We'll move the black in, move the gray in. So you just can kind of play with the gray and the black until you get something that you're happy with. I think that looks acceptable for me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start creating the cross-processed look that makes Lomo Photography pretty much you know, what it's known for. So we're going to create a curves layer. Now with this first curves layer, we're really just going to mess with the um, blacks and the whites. I don't really want to brighten it up a little bit, darken the darks just a bit, but I don't. And this again is just a matter of taste. I'm really trying to keep this area right here with, with the contrast in it, because if I go too far with the blacks then it, it disappears. Okay. So, <clears throat> so far so good. Now we're going to get into another curves adjustment layer. And now we're going to start to play with the actual colors. So with the reds, we're going to want to bump the reds up in the lights. We're going to want to pull them out of the darks. Then we're going to the green channel. And again, the greens are going to go up in the lights. I like to bring the greens up quite a bit. It's a matter of taste, you know, pretty much everything really is. Pull them out a little bit. And just add them slightly up in the in the darks. Then we're oops. Then we're going to go to the blue layer and we are going to put it up in the darks pull it out of the lights. All right. So there we go. That's starting to, to get the cross-process look that we're looking for. <clears throat> uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. So come over here, create a new layer. And we are going to fill that using the paint bucket tool with black. Then we are going to switch the blending mode of that layer to hue. And we are going to move the opacity down. Oh, I'm going to say about to 22% on this one looks good to me. All right. <clears throat> now we can play with uh, hue and saturation, so I would create another adjustment layer, hue and saturation, and I might want to bump the colors up a little bit, the overall colors. I'm going to, let me see what I think about the res. Okay, I like that. Yellows, I think I'm going to boost the yellows a little bit. Not too much. So that's good there. Okay, so now we are going <clears throat> to add a blur because the old Lomo cameras were, they're toy cameras. I mean, even the modern ones are, you know, they're, they're toys. So the, the focus isn't super sharp. So what we're going to do to help mimic 
the, the bad focus on those is we are going to make another copy of layer one. We are going to go to filter, blur, lens blur. Now with the lens blur, <clears throat> you can adjust how much you want it blurred. So I'm gonna pull it down here, right around. Mm, that's maybe a little bit too much for my taste. Maybe we'll go down to about about six on this one. Again, what you want, you, your preferences are more important than following some set formula. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have the blur, blur ah the blur layer and we are going to add a layer mask to it. We're going to switch to our brush tool. We're gonna to switch the opacity to around 50%. We're going to paint with black on this white um, mask here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull the blur out just of the areas that you don't want it in, you know, so. <clears throat> We want a little bit of the picture to be in pretty decent focus. I'm also going to mention that I have the hardness. I have a very soft brush and I have the hardness down to zero. And I'd say that's pretty good for the, the focus area on this one. Maybe I'll add a little bit more into about here. And that should do for that. I'm now going to sharpen the image a little bit. So again, I'm going to control J to create a copy of layer one. And on this one, I'm going to go to filter, other, high pass. Cut up and then we will switch to overlay light okay so we have a hard light but I'm going to reduce the opacity on it so it's not over sharpening every single thing in the in the picture okay so now you can see before and after okay and from there, what we're going to do is we're going to add some grain. <clears throat> so we will create a new layer. So just click over here. And we are going to fill that layer with gray. I'm going to go with kind of a lighter gray. So choose your paint bucket tool. We're going to go to filter, noise, add noise. Uh, you're going to want to have monochromatic checked. We're going to leave it uniform and then you can just kind of play with the amount you don't want it to be huge you know but you don't want it to be like you know completely invisible either so I think that's pretty good there and we are going to set the blending mode on this to overlay and again we're going to play with fade the opacity I'm gonna say somewhere around some around 40% <clears throat> looks pretty good to me. Um, and then you can just kind of mess around with it from here. You know, I'm thinking I'd like maybe the greens up a little bit more in this. Let me see what I think after I actually do it. Yeah, it's not really making that much of a difference. Okay. So from here, you can save it as a JPEG. And let's look at the before and after. So here it is after we've done all the processing. And here's the before, after. All right. So I hope that helped you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, talk to you later.